Good morning, this is Kyle Viola coming at you with another video. No coffee, I have Jesus, I had coffee this morning. But as I was drinking my coffee, I saw John 17 sitting there at the table with my mom. We were about to do Bible study. And so I'm going to do Bible study right here. And I feel the Lord too, sharing and reiterating this, this statement at the end of John 16, right before 17, Jesus says this. And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. So we get confidence by resting in Jesus and by taking Jesus' teachings, we are given peace because that's Jesus' purpose too, to give us peace. He says, for in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous for I have conquered the world. So he doesn't take away the troubles and sorrows that's in the world. The world has troubles. But he says, be courageous, for I have conquered the world. So knowing and enforcing that truth that Jesus is the conqueror and he already has the victory. And I said in my last video that there is a completion process to a point where even death is eliminated. And then it will be no more. That's when we get to the end of it all. And we get to spend the rest of eternal life with him. In the meantime... We have a work to do while we are here on this earth. I'm reminded of John the Baptist. He came, he was respected by people and religious people, and he baptized in water. But John said, I baptize in water, but there is one to come that will baptize in fire. And I'm not even worthy to tie his sandals. And that's how holy that Jesus is. He, when he speaks too, he speaks and we receive that message, it should baptize you in his fire, by his spirit. So, Jesus' prayer in John 17 is super key for all of us believers, disciples, and everyone who even believes in him. It says this, Jesus prayed as he looked up into heaven, Father, the, and this is, by the way, I want to point out, I pray that we will be baptized in the fire as we receive this message of what Jesus says. And that's what he does. So, Father, the time has come. Unveil the glorious splendor of your Son, so that I will magnify your glory. You have already given me authority over all people, so that I may give the gift of eternal life to all those that you have given to me. Eternal life means to know you and experience you as the only true God. And to know and experience Jesus Christ as the Son whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth by faithfully doing everything you've told me to do. So my Father, restore me back to the glory that we shared together when we were face to face before the universe was created. So before all creation was created, Jesus was already there face to face with the Father. Now something about the fire is that when we get baptized in the fire, it burns and it refines us because gold is refined by fire. But fire will burn the chaff, will burn the straw. So the useless things that we don't need, but will refine the gold in you. So that's why we need to get the, the word in, in us and to get the words of Jesus in us. Not only do we get peace and confidence and rest, but we also get refined. So this is Jesus, what Jesus says, Father, I have manifested who you really are. The full character of God the Father is in Jesus. So how he walked and talked is, re is the revelation of who the Father is and his character. The compassion that he has and the love that he has for us. And I have revealed you to the men and women that you gave to me. They were yours and you gave them to me. And they have fastened your word firmly to their hearts. So we receive his word, we fasten his word to our hearts. And now at last, they know that everything I have is a gift from you. And the very words you gave to me to speak, I have passed on to them. Jesus spoke with the Father speaking. I have pa I, they have received your words and carry them in their hearts. And they are convinced that I have come from your presence. See, that's, how, that's what makes a Christian, a believer of Jesus. We know that Jesus came from the presence of the Father and he revealed the, reveals the Father and his personality to us. And they have fully believed that you sent me to represent you. 
So Jesus represents the Father. So with deep love, deep love, I pray for my disciples. I'm not asking on behalf of the unbelieving world. So Jesus doesn't pray for the world, the unbelieving world. So clearly that's why the world is a mess because Jesus prays for his disciples. He doesn't pray for the unbelieving world, or at least this particular prayer. He says this, but for those who belong to you, those you have given to me, for all who belong to me now belong to you. And all who belong to you now belong to me as well. And my glory is revealed through their surrendered lives. Holy Father, I am about to leave this world. So there's a difference. There's this world, and then there's another place in heaven where the Father is, in his throne room, where creation even came from. To return and be with you. So Jesus came down, and he returns back to the Father. Same thing for us. And spiritually speaking, actually, God actually has his spirit and we are implanted from him into our mother's womb and we will return to him. But my disciples will remain here. So the disciples are not taken out of this world. We remain here. So I ask that by the power of your name, protect each one that you have given me. So there's also protection under the wing, under the shadow of his wings, under the, the care of Jesus Christ in the covenant, the relationship we have with the Father through Jesus. And watch over them so they will be united as one, even as we are one. So I believe this is God's perfect will, that the disciples of Jesus Christ would be united as one, as Jesus is also one with the Father. So Jesus is one with the Father. He calls us to be one with him. While I was with these that you have given me, I've kept them safe by your name that you have given me. Not one of them is lost, except the one that was destined to be lost, so that the scripture will be fulfilled. That was Judas, who betrayed Jesus. But now I am returning you to you, so Father, I pray that they will experience and enter into my joyous delight in you, so that it is fulfilled in them and overflows. This is what the footnote says about that delight. This delight is more than happiness. Happiness is a temporary emotion. You can be happy one moment and sad the next. But this is what joy is. Joy is. It is the complete satisfaction that comes in knowing that our lives are pleasing to the Father and that we fulfill his desires on the earth. This is the delight that Jesus shares with us and prays that we would also experience. I have given them your message and that is why the unbelieving world hates them. So the unbelieving world is supposed to hate Christians, supposed to hate the ones who belong to God, who believe in Jesus, who follow in his ways. For their allegiance is no longer to this world, because I am not of this world. I am not asking that you remove them from the world, but I ask that you guard their hearts from evil. So our hearts need to be guarded from evil, and that's what Jesus' prayer for us is as, as well, to guard, to, for our hearts to be guarded by the world, because the world is evil. For they no longer believe, belong to this world any more than I do. Jesus does not belong to this world. No wonder people have a hard time be, believing in Jesus because he doesn't belong to this world. Your word is truth, so make them holy by the truth. I have commissioned them to represent me, just as you commissioned me to represent you. So Jesus represents the Father. We disciples represent him, Jesus. And now I dedicate myself to them as a holy sacrifice so that they will live as fully dedicated to God and be holy by your truth. So I'm going to skip over down to um, the, the glory that Jesus talks about. For the very glory you have given to me, I have given them so that they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. Again, unity. That's God's perfect will for us to be unified to enjoy the glory that's been given to Jesus, that's been given to us, to experience that joy. You live fully in me, and now I live fully in them, so that they will experience perfect unity. And the world will be convinced that you have sent me. So how does the world get convinced that Jesus was sent? When we come into unity, and we enter into that place of joy, and even in that place of rest, we have peace from Jesus. For they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love that you have for me. So the same passionate love the Father has for Jesus is the same passionate love he has for us that we all get to share. Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you have given to me to be with, where, be with me where I am 
Then they will see my full glory, the very splendor you have placed upon me, because you have loved me even before the beginning of time. You are my righteous father, but the unbelieving world has never known you in the perfect way that I know you. And all those who believe in me also know that you have sent me. I reveal to them who you are, and I will continue to make you even more real to them, so that they may experience the same endless love that you have for me. For your love will now live in them, even as I live in them. So Jesus lives in you as a disciple of Jesus Christ, as a follower, as a believer. You receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants to baptize you in fire because the fire refines us and it molds our character. And God loves you with a passionate love. The same love that the Father has for Jesus, his son, is the same love that he has for us that we get to share and we get to experience in unity in the Spirit. And so that's God's perfect will for us to be unified, actually. We also share in his sufferings. We share each other's sufferings. I feel so bad for the underground church in other countries where they're persecuted and, you know, thrown into jail or even killed for their faith. But we also share in the celebration and the joy that we have, the celebration to know God, the celebration of anything that is good. Every good gift that's given is from God anyway. So God loves you. God bless you. I hope this encourages you. And I will see you next time. Peace.